talk to you today about a kid that I was great friends with growing up. This young boy was uh, deeply emotional, <clears throat> very passionate, uh, very loving, very kind, uh, lots of compassion, everything, all the good things, all the emotion, right? He embraced the fullness of, uh, of the human experience. He had a mother who did a lot to support that, right? To help usher that along, help him to expand, uh, explore and expand into that. And through her encouragement, he was very possessed of the idea that there was just a certain way that he was, and that was cool. That was good, be who you are. He also had a very loving father who was very much the stereotypical archetype of masculinity uh, at that time. Very stoic, a believer in men not expressing their emotions, not really living out of a place where they, they, they get much out of their, besides just in their head, right? With their, their physicality, heck yeah, sports, you know, climb the mountain, uh, run the miles, whatever, and uh, think find success in the world, provide for your family, roof over the head, meals on the plate, the whole deal. Uh, but in reality, for him, what he thought was the whole deal was only part of, of what he was called to be. And that brought about in my friend a lot of conflict. You've got two very, very different perspectives on masculinity and humanity even, kind of constantly back, uh, interestingly enough. They have here their own arguments along the way as well. Uh, now, when he got to elementary school, he showed up in the way that a lot of other kids showed up as they were five, six, seven years old. And they haven't learned enough to know that maybe they, they start to, to subscribe to this idea that they should be less of who they are, that the world needs less of their authentic, energized self, and they need to more completely... Uh, fall in line with an image of who it is that they're supposed to be. They need to conform. They need to go along to get along. But at some point, that obviously kind of started to affect this young man as well. And as he got out of a place of, of joy, of love, of, of the entire spectrum of human emotion, he and I started to grow apart. It kind of is what it is, right? We just, we lost that connection. We lost that alignment. We were just, I felt like we were on separate paths. It worsened as time passed, as he got older. Needless to say, things ramped up in intensity. The, the pressing down, the mashing down of his emotions ramped up as he was more and more exposed to this idea that that was not what men did. That was not who men were. And eventually, all of that shame and guilt uh, that, that he had correlated with being his, his full self started to create a pressurized situation and he lacked the ability to deal with emotions. He lacked a vocabulary to describe what he was feeling and he certainly lacked the ability to deal with life on life's terms. Coping wasn't actually happening. He defaulted to running away from emotion. His idea of the spectrum of male emotion uh, was happiness and if there was like the tiniest little inkling of sadness, it immediately descended into anger and then into rage. There was no, there was no yield, right? It was either red or green. And for him, this became, needless to say, a really destructive way of being, not in alignment with who he was created to be. Circumstances being what they are in life, eventually he was held to account for the way that he was being or not being. And life kind of pressed down on him a lot, and he started to realize that something had to change, and in the immediacy, he did not think that it was him. Of course not. None of this is his fault. He doesn't have ownership of all these circumstances. It's all circumstances, right? It's not me. It's not me at the center of my life. Uh, it's all the circumstances that are happening to me. These things are so unfair. Something happened, and there was a conversion in his way of thinking and his perspective, and he realized Maybe he was the driving force behind these struggles that he was experiencing. And the switch flipped. 
right? And he began to own his stuff. He began to realize that there was accountability that needed to happen. He began to understand about the courage that's involved with vulnerability, and that vulnerability ultimately can't exist without courage. And courage, frankly, doesn't exist without vulnerability, right? You gotta put yourself out there a little bit. Real courage, I'm not talking about uh, this kind of fake, trumped up sort of uh, Hollywood courage, right? We're not talking about going and getting in a bar brawl. We're talking about the real courage that it takes to put yourself out there when you know that you're very much at risk emotionally. That was the time that we started to get real. Like, things really took off with our relationship with each other, and there was a lot more love, a lot more friendship, a lot more knowing. And today, when I look at that guy in the mirror, who I see looking back at me, is a whole lot more of, of the idea of who it was that I was created to be. I'm not living a separate life from my authentic self anymore. It is aligned. I do my best to live out of the power vested in me from that. But talking to you today a bit about authentic masculinity, see the world is a much better, fuller, more amazing place when we are living out of the fullness of who we were created to be. Our life purpose, our way of being, not a muted, tamped down version of that, not a partial experience uh, in, in this world, right? We have seen through the ages, go back years, decades, millennia even, right? Men have been typically in a position of power. And that hasn't always come out too well. We gotta be honest about it, we have to own it. We have to own our mistakes before anything can happen, before we can make any progress, before we can begin to heal. We haven't always been good stewards of the things with which we've been entrusted. Uh, as, as the males in the world, right, as the masculine force in the world, we have minimized the feminine force. We have put the feminine voice uh, at, at, at the kids' table and said, no, no worries, we got this. Our ego, our pride, our strength, our courage is going to carry us uh, exactly where we need to go. We'll provide for you. We'll protect you. You, you know, sit in the corner. We are finally beginning to move out of that place, right? So you have you've had centuries of a pendulum being on one side. The pendulum, thankfully, thankfully, is beginning to, to move back towards the middle. The risk is that in an effort to highlight mistakes, again, that have been made, that have to be owned, there's space and time where folks can't seem to progress past the pain, past the blame, shame and the guilt stage. And if we are in a position of whacking folks over the head, with because of who you were, because of how you were born. You didn't get a vote, by the way. I don't remember getting a vote in the womb about being a man or a woman or, or being a white guy or any of that, right? We, it just is what it is. We are who we are, who we were created to be. And we, there's a lot of things. We can't be sitting here messaging to men that you're bad because of the way you were born, your inherent traits that you had no vote in, right? That kind of is a lot of what has brought a ton of negativity already into the world. How could it make sense to propagate that, just, just pointing it in a different direction? If we know that it doesn't work, why in the world would we continue to try to do that? So what has to happen, has to happen, is that we look to a problem area, in this case, men or masculinity or, or a skewed view of what it means to be a man. We look to the problem area, and that's also where we're going to find the solution. Right? If men represent a problem area, then the solution is with men as well. It can't be uh, a bunch of directives thrown at men to say, you be this way, do this thing this way, only ever. You've got to make up for the sins of your past or the sins of your fathers or forefathers beyond. There has to be an invitation to have a seat at the table. And that can't happen. That can't happen. We can't co-create a solution. We can't create an environment of healing, uh, if men are only on the defensive, or if anybody's only on the defensive, 
right? Because when you're placed in a position of being in the defensive, what are you doing? You're trying to survive. And in a lot of cases, that involves justifying behaviors. I'm not actually, I haven't been that wrong. I haven't been this, that, and the other, making excuses, justifications to get by. And when we've got excuses and justifications of negative behaviors, there's not a whole lot of room to grow. There's not a whole lot of room to heal and to move forward in a way that brings the world into a new age. At this point, I feel like it is almost beyond dispute that men have to show up. Masculinity has to show up in a new and very powerful way. We have to use the truest sense of our voice, our authentic voice, our authentic selves. Nowadays, so technology is a wonderful thing. There's a really good chance that you're listening to me right now, if, if you're online, well, even if you're in here, right, you're hearing me feel a microphone that was developed. Uh, technology helps run our world. Technology has brought about a great deal of amazing change. We are, we're in the best position we've ever been in in history. There are fewer people starving, fewer people living below the poverty line. People have more opportunities because of technology, because of applied science, right? However, comma, just like anything else, too much of a good thing is not a good thing. And when we get in a position where some men feel attacked, some men feel beaten down about being who they know they were created to be, they're getting out of alignment because they feel like there's a, there's a certain image that they've got to live up to, um, and isolation becomes a harbor for them. Isolation starts to feel safe. And they don't deal with emotions. They don't work through what it is that they've got to work through to be the best version of themselves or the truest version of themselves. And maybe they isolate the technology. Don't mishear me. I'm not trying to pound the drum against like video games are awful. Video games aren't necessarily awful in proportion. Things are not awful in proportion. But what we've got right now is a lot of situations that come up, we, we see it when, when young men, unfortunately, very hurt, damaged young men, lash out. And it's a lot of times coming on the back end of a downward spiral that started with a negative feedback loop. They're told they're not manly enough, whatever the heck that means, right? You're not manly enough. Your version of masculinity isn't valuable. You're not valued. Until you start to conform, stop feeling, start thinking and doing. Forget feelings, right? You think and you do. But these people weren't built that way. These young men weren't built that way. And so to avoid the pain of that, that confrontation, if you will, of the souls, they isolate. And that compounds the Human beings were not created to exist on an island. We were created to live in community and to have deep, authentic, meaningful connection with folks in our lives. I'm not talking about making 300 friends and acting like 300 friends are your actual friends, right? I'm talking about having your go-tos. And if we've created an environment where these young men feel like they're not good enough, they're not enough, uh, who they were created to be isn't what we need from them, uh, then they're going to run from that. Naturally, they're not going to be called into a place of courage. They're not going to be called into a place of vulnerability because they get their hands smacked. <laughs> they're lucky if all they get is their hands smacked every time that they try to be their authentic selves. And when you've got this pressurized situation where people are being told that they have to be who they're not. Uh, you're, you're creating, essentially, you've got, you've got a boiling pot of water, a lot of rage, a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of really awful emotion. You've got a boiling pot of water with a lid. What's eventually going to happen if you don't turn down the heat? There's going to be an explosion, right? And that's what we see, unfortunately, far too many times we see these hurt, broken young men that are living out of a place of intense rage uh, that, that's born from their isolation, their feelings of less than, uh, and, and and then we have to, as a society, try to figure out reasons why these things happen. I come to you today to submit to you the idea that we don't need 
less masculinity. We don't need men to make up for all the time that they've had in the spotlight by getting out of it per se. What we need is a well-adjusted, well-calibrated, realistic idea of what masculinity even is. Passed down generation to generation. For as long back, as far back as any of us can remember, we have this idea of masculinity that is so far off base. We've encouraged our young men, we have raised our young men to live a partial life. They're not living the, the four, five, six dimensional existence that, that we as humans were created to live. At most, they're getting two dimensions, right? Physical, mental, that's about as far as they go. We have to stop with the blame. We have to stop with the shame. We have to get real and invite them to the table for the conversation that hopefully can empower them to set themselves free, to be who they were created to be, to live out of their purpose. The world needs people who are electrified and brought to life by their purpose. Well, if you live day to day thinking that you've got to keep your head down and not be who you were created to be, how can you ever come to life? How can you ever experience the aliveness that was intended for you? We have to, we, we must, it is necessary for the future of the world at large. We must invite these men to a seat at the table and help them understand that it's okay. It's not just okay, but encouraged to feel emotions. We have to give them a vocabulary to describe these emotions. Right? It's not just happy or pissed off. <laughs> There's a whole spectrum that you're missing out on if that's all you think you're supposed to experience, right? We have to give them a space where they feel safe to mess up, where it's okay, because you get wrong. You are worthy. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to fall on your face. It's not okay to stay on your face. It's not okay to stay there. But it's absolutely not just okay, but encouraged to take enough risks in a measured way. Fall on your face so you can learn. You're not going to learn much from success, right? But we have to make sure that we are inviting our men into a space where they know that it's okay. We have to encourage them to be vulnerable with each other to embrace masculine vulnerability. There's an intense amount of power there. And that helps us move away from a distorted idea of courage. I feel like at the root of a lot of toxic behaviors on the part of men is a distorted view of what courage actually is. Right? Courage is taking a risk. Courage isn't necessarily doing extremely risky things that put yourself, like you know, physically, that put you in a compromised position uh, or in danger in other people's lives, right? You have to have the courage to be vulnerable, to be true, to be who you really are. You have to move beyond your fear. You have to move, honestly, in truth, it's not a matter of acting without fear. It's a matter of acting in spite of it. You're not going to be able to numb that emotion or that, that, that feeling out. You don't get to get rid of fear. Fear is a fact. Fear is real. But like any other emotion, any other experience that men are having, we have to teach them that within proportion, like it's just part of your journey. It's just part of your experience. Fear's okay. You just can't get stuck there. You have to move forward anyway, right? We have to begin the dialogue today. We, we needed to begin the dialogue a decade ago. And I think that we started to make inroads. And then somewhere along the way, people begin a very justified, like it's justifiable, justifiable to be pissed. It's justifiable if you've been hurt to be angry. You just can't act out of that. Turning, you know, returning fire for fire just means the whole world is burning. We're in this together. We're all in this together. So let's figure out a way to co-create a solution. To get creative and usher in a new era, what it means to be a man. If that means, like, if you're authentic expression of masculinity, singing a song, sing the song, right? Write the poem. Climb a mountain. Do bear crawls, pull-ups, whatever, right? Love deeply. You're created to love deeply. If your if you're authentic expression of masculinity, who you were created to be, calls you 
to, to some, any other, say, autistic form of expression, anything that is not even traditionally masculine, that's okay. But it's okay if it's traditionally masculine as well, as long as you're not imposing that on someone else, and violating their rights. My rights, my rights end where yours begin, right? I'm not, it, it's not okay to violate that. We can't move forward if we're not moving forward together. The world can't get where it needs to go with half the people not on the boat. We have to work together with love, with grace, with respect to heal our men so we can heal our world. Thank you.